Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. Make sure you check out Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Uh, check, them out. check them out. They're in Marin. They're open seven days a week in Corte Madera from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And they're open Wednesday through Sunday in Emeryville, inside the Emeryville Public Marketplace. Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Well, 49ers um, have a really interesting um, secondary, I think, going into this upcoming season. ESPN's Mike Clay uh, did a whole breakdown of the Niner corners and had them as the 24th best group um, in the NFL out of 33 teams. So he doesn't think highly of um, the 49ers secondary. And Charvarius Ward really was outstanding in his first year. Um, he's their number one corner. And then Diamador Lenore emerged as a really solid starter um, starting opposite him at outside corner and a little bit at the, on the nickel spot. And then, um, of course, this year, the Niners lose Emmanuel Mosley and they lose Jimmy Ward. And so I, I think Clay's ranking reflects their lack of depth at the position. Now, the Niners did bring in a couple DBs. Uh, Miles Hartsfield comes in from uh, Carolina. Isaiah Oliver signed away from the Falcons. Both those guys, I think, are going to play that nickel spot. But to me, there's one guy that I think when I'm looking at Clay's rankings of 24th overall that they are discounting and forgetting about, and it's Samuel Womack III. And Womack is really an interesting guy. He was drafted in the fifth round out of Toledo and, you know, spent a lot of the, a lot of the year on the bench. Um, Womack entered last season as the starter at nickel and – um, but then was primarily used on special teams. And eventually Lenore took that job away from him. Lenore wind up playing a lot of nickel. And then the season ending injury to Emmanuel Mosley kicked Lenore out to the outside. Um, and, and, but you didn't see Womack jump in as the, at the inside spot, they moved Jimmy Ward from free safety to nickel and started Tayshawn Gibson and Womack basically still played off the bench. Um, I think Womack is really a solid football player. I think this guy is really going to be a key guy for them this year. Um, he, he's he's outstanding mover. He's got versatility. He can play inside. He can play outside. And, you know, he really, I thought, played really naturally last year. He had 37 pass breakups across his final three seasons with Toledo. And he's just a smart football player. Um, and and I, to me, when you look at, at Womack and his ability, the thing that I saw last year was his break on the football is really, really good. I mean, he, he ran 4-4 four, four flat coming out of Toledo, which was 84th percentile uh, in the 40. And he plays fast. He, this guy's a savvy corner. He can recognize routes. He anticipates routes. He understands what's coming. He's got terrific ball skills. There were more than a handful of opportunities this last year where if he had had, if he had recognized the play, even a half second sooner, it could have been a pick six. He got his hands on a number of balls last year and made a number of plays on the ball. Uh, he's an aggressive corner and he will put his body in traffic. He'll make tackles. He's really a, an alert defender in zone. You know, when you're playing zone coverage, you got to be aware. You got to have a great awareness. And this guy's got a great understanding of routes, route progressions. Uh, he's got a great burst. He comes downhill in a hurry. And he'll break on underneath passes in front of him. He's got really good instincts. He's got really good anticipatory reads. Um, he reads and reacts what he sees. He's a disciplined player, and he's dangerous when he's got the ball in his hands. So I like him in zone. He's very aware. He's very He understands what he's looking at. He'll read the quarterback's eyes. But this guy is also really good in man coverage, and he's got a physical hand punch um, at the line of scrimmage. He's, you know, he's not the biggest corner, but, man, he does not give you a free release. He will fight you at the line of scrimmage. He's got the straight line speed to run downfield with receivers. Um, I really like him now. He doesn't have the biggest size. He lacks, you know, ideal size. He lacks the ideal frame. Um, he's got a little bit shorter arms, but 
man, the guy's a tremendous athlete. He's a leaper. He's, he's a, he's a, he's a guy that, um, really has a lot of talent. Now as a younger player, he bit on a lot of play action fakes. Um, but you know what? I thought he got better at that as the year went on. You know, he's not the biggest guy. He's got average height. He doesn't have the smoothest back pedal you've ever seen a little choppy in the back pedal. Um, and, but this year, last year, there were, I would say four or five times where he got his hands on a football where this year he'll be a little bit more, a little bit further, more advanced in his recognition skills. I expect him to take those balls back for a touchdown. I think he'll wind up as a productive interceptor this year that has multiple pick sixes. This guy's got a great break on the ball. He came so close last year to picking off two or three and taking it back to the house. And this year, his his recognition will improve as his film study gets better, as he's more comfortable in their scheme. Um, And I I really think Womack is going to be an outstanding player. You know, he doesn't have huge size. You know, there's no question about that. He's not the biggest guy ever. But as far as his agility, really good agility, um, good arm length, good 40 time, you know, there's a lot to like here. And when you watched him play last year, you could see this guy knows how to play the position. You know, this guy is not out there just kind of throwing it around or, you know, throwing his, his body around. He knows what he's doing. He really does. Um, and I, I, to me, that was a, a phenomenal pick, you know, and, and the scouts that liked Womack liked him really for a couple of years. They had their eye on him for a couple of years. And they, the Niners drafted him 29th pick overall, uh, 29th pick in the in the fifth round in last year's draft, 172 overall. And you know he's a kid from Detroit, Michigan. He's a tough kid. He's humble. Um, you know, a lot of people felt like he had a real chance to make the roster or at least the practice squad. He wanted to play the whole year on the roster. And uh, to me, I, I really, really like this player. I think this guy is a player that's going to take off. He was a first team all Mac player his final year in 2021. He tied for second in the FBS with 16 pass breakups, made 33 tackles, had a couple picks in 13 games, 12 starts. But I mean, I'll tell you what I love the most about, about um, Samuel Womack is this guy's a worker. And nothing's been given to him. He's fought and clawed for everything he's gotten. This guy showed up at Toledo. He was a walk-on. He was a walk-on. He had no scholarship. He went from a walk-on to an all-conference player. That is a huge amount of growth. That's a huge distance. There's a huge distance between a walk-on player and an all-conference player. And that's what happened to him. He was a walk-on. And then he developed into a ball hawking slot defender um, with eye popping speed. I mean, he's got great break, four four flat, great quickness, definitely above average ball production. Three year starter in college, really natural player out there. Not a lot of wasted steps. Now he's not the strongest guy against the run. He needs to focus on on play, you know going low, staying low against the run. Um, but what I love is that. This guy almost took two or three back for six last year. I expect him to make those plays this year. I think you're going to see Samuel Womack emerge as a really, really valuable player. Um, And I think, you know, between Deshaun Jameson, the undrafted kid out of Texas, and Womack, you've got two smallish corners who have great break on the football. And I expect Womack to really take it to another level this year. So, if there's one guy that makes me think, you know what? They're sleeping on the Niners young secondary. It's Samuel Womack, the third from walk on to all conference to a hell of a rookie year. You're going to see real growth from year one to year two. And those interceptions that he got his hands on last year, he's going to catch him this year. And those balls that he batted down last year, he's going to take a couple of those back for touchdowns this year. And you're going to see with better recognition, that this guy emerges and with it, the Niners secondary young secondary will emerge as well. All right. Hope you enjoyed our video on Samuel Womack, the third, uh, thanks to pig and a pickle for being a proud sponsor of the Krug show. And, uh, thanks to all of you guys for supporting the Krug show on YouTube.